Leon Frank Cholgosz Polish pronunciation T May 5 1873 to October 29 1901 was a Polish American anarchist and former steel worker who assassinated US President William McKinley in September 1901 Cholgosz was executed 7 weeks later Topic Early life Cholgosz was born in Alpena, Michigan, on May 5, 1873. He was one of eight children born to Polish-American family of Paul Cholgosz and his wife Mary Novak. The Cholgosz family moved to Detroit when Leon was five. When he was ten years old, while living in Posen, Michigan, Cholgosz's mother died six weeks after giving birth to his sister, Victoria. In his mid-teens, he worked in a glass factory in Natrona, Pennsylvania. By age 17 he found employment at the Cleveland Rolling Mill Company, after the economic crash of 1893, when the factory closed for some time and looked to reduce wages, the workers went on strike, putting Leon and his brothers out of work. With great economic and social turmoil around him, Cholgosh found little comfort in the Catholic Church and other immigrant institutions, and sought others who shared his concerns regarding injustice. He joined a moderate workingman's socialist club, the Golden Eagle Society, and eventually a more radical socialist group known as the Sila Club where he became interested in anarchism. <laughs> Interest in anarchism In 1898, after witnessing a series of similar strikes many ending in violence, and perhaps ill from a respiratory disease, Cholgosh went to live with his father who had bought a 55-acre farm the year before in Warrensville, Ohio. He did little to assist in the running of the farm and was constantly at odds with his stepmother and with his family's Roman Catholic beliefs. It was later recounted that throughout his life he had never shown any interest in friendship or romantic relationships and was bullied during his childhood by peers, he became a recluse. He was impressed after hearing a speech by the political radical Emma Goldman, whom he met for the first time during one of her lectures in Cleveland in May 1901. After the lecture, Cholgosh approached the speaker's platform and asked for reading recommendations. On the afternoon of July 12, 1901, he visited her at the home of Abraham Isaac, publisher of the newspaper Free Society, in Chicago and introduced himself as Fred Neiman nobody, but Goldman was on her way to the train station. He only had enough time to explain to her about his disappointment in Cleveland socialists, and for Goldman to introduce him to her anarchist friends who were at the train station. She later wrote a piece in defense of Cholgosh. In the weeks that followed, his social awkwardness, his evasiveness, and his blunt inquiries about secret societies around Isaac and another anarchist, Emil Schilling, caused the radical Free Society newspaper to issue a warning pertaining to Cholgosh, on September 1, reading, Attention. The attention of the comrades is called to another spy. He is well dressed, of medium height, rather narrow shoulders, blonde and about 25 years of age. Up to the present he has made his appearance in Chicago and Cleveland. In the former place he remained but a short time, while in Cleveland he disappeared when the comrades had confirmed themselves of his identity and were on the point of exposing him. His demeanor is of the usual sort, pretending to be greatly interested in the cause, asking for names or soliciting aid for acts of contemplated violence. If this same individual makes his appearance elsewhere the comrades are warned in advance, and can act accordingly. Cholgosh believed there was a great injustice in American society, an inequality which allowed the wealthy to enrich themselves by exploiting the poor. He concluded that the reason for this was the structure of government itself. Then he learned of a European crime which changed his life. On July 29, 1900, King Umberto I of Italy had been shot dead by anarchist Gaetano Bresci. Bresci told the press that he had decided to take matters into his own hands for the sake of the common man. New York City Police Lieutenant Joseph Petrosino believed that the same Italian based anarchist group suspected of responsibility for King Umberto's death was also targeting President McKinley, but his warnings were ignored. Topic. Assassination of President McKinley On August 31, 1901, Cholgosh traveled to Buffalo, New York, the site of the Pan American Exposition, where he rented a room in Noack's Hotel at 1078 Broadway. On September 6, Cholgosh went to the exposition armed with a concealed .32 caliber Iver Johnson safety automatic revolver he had purchased four days earlier. 
he approached McKinley, who had been standing in a receiving line inside the Temple of Music, greeting the public for ten minutes. At 4.07 p.m., Cholgosh reached the front of the line. McKinley extended his hand. Cholgosh slapped it aside and shot the president in the abdomen twice, at point-blank range, the first bullet ricocheted off a coat button and lodged in McKinley's jacket, the other seriously wounded him in his stomach. President McKinley died eight days later on September 14 of an infection which had spread from the wound. Members of the crowd immediately attacked Cholgosh, as McKinley slumped backward. The president said, Go easy on him, boys. The police struggled to keep the crowd off of Cholgosh. He was held in a cell at Buffalo's 13th Precinct House at 346 Austin Street until he was moved to police headquarters. Topic. Trial and execution After McKinley's death, newly inaugurated President Theodore Roosevelt declared, When compared with the suppression of anarchy, every other question sinks into insignificance. On September 13, the day before McKinley succumbed to his wounds, Cholgosh was taken from the police headquarters, which were undergoing repairs, and transferred to the Erie County Women's Penitentiary. On September 16, he was brought to the Erie County Jail ahead of being arraigned before County Judge Emery. After the arraignment, Cholgosh was transferred to Auburn State Prison. A grand jury indicted Cholgosh on September 16 with one count of first degree murder. Throughout his incarceration, Cholgosh spoke freely with his guards, but he refused every interaction with Robert C. Titus and Loran L. Lewis, the prominent judges turned attorneys assigned to defend him, and with the expert psychiatrist sent to test his sanity, the case was prosecuted by the Erie County District Attorney, Thomas Penny, and Assistant D.A. Frederick Holler, whose performance was described as flawless. Although Cholgosh answered that he was pleading guilty. Presiding Judge Truman C. White overruled him and entered a not guilty plea on his behalf, even had the jury believed the defense that Cholgosh was insane, by claiming that no sane man would have shot and killed the president in such a public and blatant manner, knowing he would be caught, there was still the legal definition of insanity to be overcome. Under New York law, Cholgosh was legally insane only if he was unable to understand what he was doing and the jury was unconvinced of Cholgosh's insanity due to the directions given to them by Judge White, thus convicting him in only less than a half hour of deliberations a jury member later said it would have been sooner but they wanted to review the evidence before conviction. His last words were, I killed the president because he was the enemy of the good people, the good working people. I am not sorry for my crime. I am sorry I could not see my father. Cholgosh was electrocuted by three jolts, each of 1,800 volts, in Auburn Prison on October 29, 1901, 45 days after his victim's death. He was pronounced dead at 7.14. Leon Cholgosh's brother, Waldick, and his brother-in-law, Frank Bandowski, were in attendance at the execution. When Waldick asked the warden for his brother's body to be taken for proper burial, he was informed that he would never be able to take it away and that crowds of people would mob him. Cholgosh was autopsied by John E. Jaron, his brain was autopsied by Edward Anthony Spitzka, the autopsy showed his teeth were normal but in poor condition, likewise the external genitals were normal although cicatrices were present, the result of chancroids. The autopsy showed the deceased was in good health, a death mask was made of the deceased. The body was buried on prison grounds following the autopsy. Prison authorities had planned to enter the body with quicklime to hasten its decomposition, but decided otherwise after testing quicklime on a sample of meat. After determining that they were not legally limited to the use of quicklime for the process, they poured sulfuric acid into Cholgosh's coffin so that his body would be completely disfigured. The warden estimated that the acid caused the body to disintegrate within 12 hours. His clothes and possessions were incinerated to discourage exhibitions of his life. Legacy Emma Goldman was arrested on suspicion of being involved in the assassination, but was released, due to insufficient evidence. She later incurred a great deal of negative publicity when she published, The Tragedy at Buffalo. In the article, she compared Cholgosh to Marcus Junius Brutus, the killer of Julius Caesar, and called McKinley the President of the Money Kings and Trust Magnates. 
Other anarchists and radicals were unwilling to support Goldman's effort to aid Cholgosh, believing that he had harmed the movement. The scene of the crime, the Temple of Music, was demolished in November 1901, along with the rest of the exposition grounds. A stone marker in the median of Fordham Drive, a residential street in Buffalo, marks the approximate spot 42 degrees 56.321 and 78 degrees 52.416 W where the shooting occurred. Cholgosh's revolver is on display in the Pan American Exposition exhibit at the Buffalo History Museum in Buffalo. Lloyd Vernon Briggs, who later became the director of the Massachusetts Department for Mental Hygiene, reviewed the Cholgosh case in 1901 on behalf of Dr. Walter Channing shortly after Cholgosh's death. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Portrayals in media. Cholgosh's death was reenacted in the silent film execution of Cholgosh with Panorama of Auburn Prison. Cholgosh is also featured as a central character of Stephen Sondheim's musical Assassins, in which his assassination of McKinley is depicted in a musical number called The Ballad of Cholgosh. He was also portrayed in the Reaper episode, Leon, by Patton Oswalt as an escaped, captured, released, recaptured soul from hell who could turn his arms into large guns, but had issues with his father. Topic. Gallery Topic. See also List of assassinations Topic. Notes Topic. References Cited sources Andrews, E. Benjamin 1912. History of the United States, six volumes. New York, Charles Scribner's Sons. Retrieved June 22, 2011. Assassin Cholgosh is executed at Auburn. He declared that he felt no regret for his crime. Autopsy disclosed no mental abnormalities. Body buried in acid in the prison cemetery. The New York Times. October 30, 1901. Retrieved April 30, 2011. At 7 hours 12 minutes and 30 seconds o'clock this morning, Leon Franz Cholgosh, murderer of The formal finding in his case was composed as follows, Foreman, John P. Yeckel. Assassin known as a rabid anarchist, parents of Cholgosh found at home in Cleveland. One member of the family now draws a pension from the federal government. PDF. The New York Times published September 8, 1901. September 7, 1901. Retrieved May 4, 2014. Lay summary. Briggs, L. Vernon The Manner of Man That Kills. Channing, Walter The Mental Status of Cholgosh. American Journal of Insanity. 59 2, 1-47. ISSN 0002-953-X. Doherty, Brian the First War on Terror. Reason Magazine. ISSN 0048-6906. Retrieved June 22, 2011, a review of the world that never was, a true story of dreamers, schemers, anarchists, and secret agents, by Alex Butterworth, Pantheon Books. Everett, Marshall 1901. Complete Life of William McKinley and Story of His Assassination. Goldman, Emma 1931. Living My Life. New York, Alfred A. Knopf. Leon Cholgosh Trial, 1901. Great American Trials. New England Publishing, 1994. pp. 225-227. Lee, Earl. 2001. You Are Being Lied To. The Disinformation Company. Miller, Scott. 2011. The President and the Assassin. New York, Random House. ISBN 978-1-4000-6752-7. Rochway, Eric 2004. Murdering McKinley, The Making of Theodore Roosevelt's America paperback ed. Hill & Wong. ISBN 978-0-8090-1638-9. Richardson, Heather Cox August 24, 2003. A Captivating Tale of a Murder That Mattered, and Why It Did. Chicago Tribune. P. 7. ISSN 1085-6706.
Archived from the original on August 24, 2003. Retrieved June 22, 2011. A review of Rauchway's Murdering McKinley. Seibert, Jeffrey W. 2002. I Done My Duty, The Complete Story of the Assassination of President McKinley Illustrated ed. Bowie, M.D., Heritage Books. ISBN 978-0-7884-2118-1. Further reading External links Leon Cholgosh signed confession to the assassination of President McKinley Chappelle Manuscript Foundation Film, Execution of Cholgosh, with Panorama of Auburn Prison 1901 reenactment, Library of Congress Archives PBS Biography of Cholgosh Leon Cholgosh, Mr. Nobody. Original letter Leon Cholgosh at Find a Grave Stone marker at assassination site